This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Before we get too carried away with all this fun, let me bring you back down to earth with some boring facts and statistics. Let's talk about Codex. Now, Codex is not just a compression algorithm. It's designed to make a video compatible with wherever you're going to send it. It doesn't always make them smaller. There are a couple I want to mention to you. We've already talked about a few, like H.264. Let me throw three or four more at you. One is Sorensen Video. Sorensen, to me, is a fantastic format, particularly if you're going to the web for CDs. It delivers really good quality, pressed into a very low data package. So it's really good for web, and it's really good for CD, moving from CD to your computer. Next one, H.263. It was created primarily for video conferencing, and it's an extremely efficient and smart way to deliver good quality at low data rates. Now, in tests against Sorensen 263, actually, under certain circumstances, outperformed Sorensen for delivering information streaming-wise on the Internet. MPEG-1. MPEG actually stands for Motion Pictures Experts Group. It's a relatively new, based on the other ones, newer, I should say. It has really good quality, but it's not the preferred choice for web streaming. Let's put it that way. It has a problem with its bandwidth, but it is great for saving your movies so someone can download the movie and then play it at their leisure on their computer. MPEG-1. MPEG-2. Becoming more popular for compressing movies for DVD playback. So it's got a higher bandwidth, not designed for the internet. It's designed for using it if you're going DVD playback. The last video one I'll mention to you here, MPEG-4. Designed primarily for video over the internet and other low bandwidth applications, it's kind of like one of the latest generation of mobile phone codecs, and it does work really good in those type of applications. If you're looking for an alternative to maybe a Sorensen or an MPEG-4, you might want to try this one. Let's talk about a couple of audio ones, too. Audio, Qualcomm Pure Voice. If you're doing mostly talking without music, this is the one to use. It makes things really small and they sound really good for the human voice, but it doesn't work good with music. MP3, I think we all know that one. It's the music file format, right? MP3s use a layering feature and it's actually really good for music, but it isn't really good if you're going to stream the music over the internet, all right? But it's great for music if you're saving music in a way that doesn't have to be used, say, on the internet. IMA. This is a really good format that works good in Mac and Windows systems, and it's good for older machines. It creates a slightly larger file because of its low compression, but on the other hand, the lower compression delivers pretty good sound. So IMA. AAC. Advanced Audio Coding, that's our last one. It's a relatively new audio format, and it is kind of designed to replace, they say, the MP3 codis. It's not widely available for everybody, especially PCs, but it may eventually become the successor to the MP3. As a matter of fact, if you've worked with iPod and you've got stuff off the Apple site, you're probably already familiar with it, and it usually has an M4P file extension. That's called AAC. You choose the format based on your output and quality of what you're looking for. But those are just a few more examples that you can work with. 